180. Yes, as if you hadn't guessed, this week we're reviewing 180 by Mastertronic on the Mad Label. Originally sold for $2.99 and released in 1986 and programmed by Binary Design. Up to this point, all Dark Games have been pretty appalling. I've seen various examples, including one on the BBC Micro where different parts of the board flashed and you had to press the spacebar in order to hit that section of the board. So aiming really didn't come into it. And there were various games like that, but 180 was a little bit different, as we'll see. Various options on the menu, um, control options, this is, this is important um, for the way we play it. I'm going to redefine the keys here. Old faithful um, key definition there. We go through, and uh, now we've got the option to tune up, game on, or a two-player game, or four will send us back to the menu system. So we're going to start the game. We start in the quarterfinals against one character here. And you see the big thing about 180 is this hand that moves around the screen. Now, you have to control the hand, which is pretty obvious. Only diagonal movements on the joystick will move the hand. So the hand can only move diagonally. Depending on where the hand is positioned, in terms of the going back and forth, that will determine how high or low you will throw within a given range. So again, it's about getting the position right and then getting your timing exactly right to hit the right position. The good thing about 180, unlike some of its successors, is that it's not too easy to position your hand. If you could just move the hand left, right, up and down, you wouldn't necessarily have the challenge that you do in 180. Darts isn't, easy, isn't an easy game to play in real life. And you have to learn how to play. You just can't throw your arrows and just expect to get treble 20s. 180 is exactly the same. You can't just pick this game up and be scoring 180 with three darts in one go. You've got to practice. We get these lovely intermission sequences here when you're seeing the other player play in the bar. And on the spectrum, you actually get to see things going on in the background as well. You see what he's aiming for and what he actually gets. As you get further into the game, the players you play against get better and better. I want to mention a little bit about this hand because the hand, some people think it's digitised. Well, it isn't. It was actually drawn by Steve Pickford, who did half of the graphics in the game. He didn't do these barroom scenes, but he did do the hand and I believe a few of the other graphics as well, including the loading screen on the Spectrum version, but oddly not the Amstrad version. And it's actually his hand that you're seeing there. It's Steve's hand. And he had to sit there with his hand on his first week at binary design i believe trying to on a conventional spectrum with a normal tv on an rf connection draw pixel by pixel his own hand so he'd get his hand into the position look at it and then plot it onto the screen using a graphics editor that was written by his brother john and by the magic of chinny vision that is steve's actual hand Thanks to Steve, he said, I asked him and he very kindly sent a picture across of his actual hand in the 180 pose. So you can see what he was doing back in 1986 when he was drawing his hand. And it's absolutely brilliant because you can see what a challenge it was because you had to get the animation in as well. Well, as you can see it rocking back and forth here. And it's really nice. It's one of the best parts of the game. Conventional 501, you have to end on a double, and there you go, I've, I've won that game. So now I'm on to Jammy Jim in the final, and Jammy Jim does not miss. So I, I haven't got 180 yet, I'm going to have to try and get 180 on each shot, and then finish really well in order to beat Jammy Jim, and I, I've, I've already blown my chances here, to be honest, because I've got that 20. Just trying to line up and just get that timing precisely right. Have I don't know. And what Jamie Jim's now going to do is, yeah, he's going to get treble twenty, treble twenty, and treble twenty. So I'm, I'm stuffed here. I'm absolutely stuffed here. He doesn't screw up. Oh, sixty. I've got sixty. 
have a 60. And that's another thing 180 does, even on the Sinclair Spectrum with its little one channel, one bit beeper, you get some wonderful one sampled speech there. And I've lost. Jammy Jim has won. Although I've got the consolation as being rated as red hot. So 180 on the spectrum for 299 is an absolutely brilliant game. You really can't fault it. There are hours and hours of fun here. So move over to the Amstrad. This doesn't have Steve Pickford's loading screen on it. It's drew, there were two graphics artists that work on worked on the game, and this other graphics artist did the barroom scenes, and also the Amstrad loading screen and a few other bits and pieces. Interestingly, apparently both Steve and the other artists were so young at the time they hadn't actually even been in a real pub, so they were drawing these pub scenes from references they'd got off the television and things like that. The Spectrum does have a 128K version that uses the same tunes as were written for the Amstrad, so if you've got a 128K Spectrum, do check that out. And all the versions of 180 have lots of different opponents to play against. I'm playing against Limp Wrist Larry here on the Amstrad, and they've got these little caricatures that you can see on the bottom left. Amstrad version is a little bit slower, um, and also, funny thing going on here, the dartboard is slightly elongated, it's, the spectrum screen's been plotted onto the Amstrad screen, and because of the slight differences in dimensions, it's slightly a funny shape. And on the Amstrad, if you score 100, you also get this kind of synthesised hand clapping as well. Unlike the Spectrum version, the Amstrad version doesn't have things going on in the background in the pub scenes. Which is a little bit misleading because the manual actually says to keep an eye out on the background, no matter what version you bought. But it was only, I think it's only the Spectrum that has stuff going on. Other than the slight slowdown and the slightly elongated bore, which frankly I'd never even noticed until I put the two versions side by side. 180 on the Amstrad is absolutely brilliant. You get this tune playing when you're watching your opponent play. It's pretty much exactly the same as the Spectrum version, same brilliant graphics. Plays just as well. Moving on to the Commodore 64. Got the same tune on the title screen here. The game would have been developed the same time as the Spectrum and Amstrad version, as Binary Design usually develop their games for the Amstrad Spectrum and Commodore 64 alongside each other. There's actually on the Commodore 64 here, you get a little bit more of a tune as well. It's slightly extended from the CPC version and also the version you hear in the 128K Specky version. And actually on, on this intro screen here, we get to see all the different opponents you can play in this round. We've got a different opponent here, Beer Belly Bill. Slightly... Not quite as elongated board as the Amstrad version, but still slightly out of shape here. The hand is exactly the same graphic as the Spectrum and Amstrad version. Moves around incredibly smoothly, but I'm having trouble here because the control system is slightly different to the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. I can't quite put my finger on it. It's just... It's like it's reversed. And, that, and that's very difficult to explain. I mean, it's still diagonal controls, but there's something really weird going on here that I'm guessing would feel perfectly natural to you if you'd been playing the Commodore 64 versions all these years but if you'd come from the Spectrum and Amstrad versions it's like having to play the game with I don't know your left hand or something different bar sequence here we've got I said we didn't have stuff going on in the background in the other versions actually the Commodore 64 version you do have a few things going on in the background there Still having trouble lining, lining this up. It's I've literally come from this straight from playing the Amstrad version, and I'm I'm struggling, as you can see. I'm sure, as I say, Commodore 64 users who've been playing this all these years won't have a problem. But this is weird. <laughs> On the Commodore 64, it's all 
it's a decent conversion. It's it's all here. Nice sound, really smooth smooth movement of the graphics, really smooth movement of the hand, all the same gameplay you had on the other versions. Moving across to the Atari 8-bit version, and this one was a new one on me when I first played this a few weeks ago. Same tune, although it seems slightly out of out of key. Can't quite put my finger on it there. It just sounds slightly slightly odd. But we go on and we're starting off against Mega Mick. And we've got a nice round dartboard, finally at last, just like the Spectrum version. In fact, it's the same graphics, isn't it? It's actually round um, here on the Atari 8-bit version, which is nice. Again, when you're playing the game, you won't notice these slight differences between the boards. It's only when I'm, I've literally been playing them back to back and then looking at the video side by side that I've noticed there's a problem. The graphics in the bar scene here on the Atari version are a little bit um, brown and messy. And if you watch when he comes around again, if you watch the guy's hand when he's throwing, it's not a raising his hand behind the animation, so you can actually see the other frames of animation behind his hand. We'll have a look in a minute. This version isn't as fiddly as the Commodore 64 version. It handles much more like the Spectrum and Amstrad versions. It's just a little bit slow on the throw, as you can see there. Here we go. If you look at his hand there, just make like that, you can just see that it's not erasing his hand behind the, the throwing motion. On the Atari 8 bits, 180 is a great game as it is on all the other versions. Slightly different. Yes, the bar scenes there could be slightly tidier and look nicer. But I really can't complain. There's still the same fun here to be had. Unfortunately, on neither the Commodore 64 or the Atari versions, I've managed to score 180. So I don't know if the sampled speech is in this version. So if you are a Commodore 64 or Atari fan and you know this game, please let me know in the comments below this video because I'd love to know if the Atari and the C64 versions have the sampled speech. Now, at the time it was released, 180 was the best darts game out there, no matter what format you had. Every other darts game was rubbish. 180 absolutely nailed the control system and gave you a real pub darts experience. In the years after, other games tried to copy what 180 did. Games like Bully Sporting Darts, Wacky Darts and, and games like that. And none of them were as good as 180. 180 sold in huge quantities and, and justifiably so. It was a really, really good game on all the formats. 180 was and is the best darts game you can play on any system. Regardless if it's Xbox, I don't care what, 180 still absolutely nails it as it nailed it in 1986. Get this game out. Get some friends out. Play the two-player mode because it's brilliant. It still is a fantastic game that absolutely transcends the fact that it's, what, 28 years old? It's brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. 180. It was the king of darts in 1986. It's still the king of darts in 2014.